This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Alright, so that's pretty much what it is as far as the beat itself goes. And now let's break it down track by track to take a look at all the stuff I did here to make this thing happen. And in this case I'm using the MPC Key 61 myself, but this entire workflow could also be applied to the MPC 1, the MPC Live, the Live 2 or the MPC X for that matter. Let's just dig right into it. Sequence 1, track 1, that's my sample. And the sample itself comes from an old piece of vinyl like this one, or maybe even this specific one, I'm not sure. But I sampled this one from the turntable through my audio interface into the MPC Key 61 and started chopping it up and did all the stuff that I normally do. I've covered that in a lot of videos before, so check out the channel for more information about chopping and stuff like that. And the sample itself is over here. And on the global page over here, we can see that I've pitched the sample down five semitones, which is kind of a lot compared to what it was from the record from the get-go. And the one thing I kind of want to point out here is that I've used this tail length setting on each individual slice for this one. So... That entire tail, the reverb and the delay and stuff that's kind of being added, that's all that setting over there. So without that one, it sounds like this just cuts off and added like 4,000 semitones. That's the result I'm getting. I'm not always doing that, but sometimes it works for some samples to just blend in together nicely with the drums and the, the rhythm of stuff. And if I wanted to go in here and like make things a little bit nicer, maybe I could replace that setting with an actual beat delay that works in sync with the BPM itself. But in this case, it kind of works, at least to me, and things just blends nicely together with that setting. So I've used it maybe too much in this case. Yeah, it becomes a little bit wonky and it's not totally in sync with the, with the BPM, but I think it can add something nonetheless. So that's what I did for that one. And on the track level over here, I do have a few effects going on. That's an enhancer, that's a filter, and that's the new Air Flavor Pro. That's really, really powerful and useful and makes things a little bit lo-fi or whatever. But it's also really easy to get kind of like carried away and overdo this. So if I do the pitch modulation here, for instance, the sample starts to sound like... And, you know, that's just not what I want for this one. Sometimes it could be cool to get some modulation like that going, but in this case, I'm not really going for a pure, like, lo-fi type of sound. Something a little bit more polished, but still with a little bit of touch of this one. And I felt like the cassette preset with a lower intensity and the pitch modulation stuff turned off kind of made sense and made it all, like, usable. And the filter over here is just a simple 
high pass filter that takes out a little bit of the bass from the sample because it kind of got too much with the bass and the kick drum and everything. So that's that. And the enhancer also kind of shapes up the higher frequencies and makes it shine a little bit more. So I think that's nice. And that's pretty much all I did to the sample here. You know, it's pretty much just a matter of recording a nice raw sample into the MPC, start chopping it up and finding a nice pattern to play the chops in, and then starting to add some effects and some filters and some settings and stuff to make the entire audio sound kind of in the ballpark of where you want it to be, and then moving on to the next step. Because focusing too much on the numbers and the settings and stuff, at least to me, it, it kind of breaks my creativity and makes me focus on that instead of the entire track. So let's go on to the next one, which is the drums on track two. But now a quick message from this week's sponsor, DistroKid. If you're watching a video like this one about beat making and music production, chances are that you are a musician or a beat maker, a producer or some sort of musician yourself, right? And if that's the case and you make music that you want to release to the general public, that's where a service like DistroKid comes into play really, really nicely. DistroKid is a digital distribution service that helps you to get your music out to platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Music and so many other stores like that. You can actually upload an unlimited number of tracks or songs or EPs or whatever through DistroKid for only 20 bucks a year. They handle all the distribution stuff and also the financial stuff and make sure that you get paid. So check out the link down below for an additional discount and also a nice way to support my channel. Thanks a lot to DistroKid for sponsoring the video and now let's get back to the breakdown of this track. And the drum samples that I'm using for this one actually comes from Excellent Audio's Addictive Drums. I put together a little drum kit on my computer at home the other night. And then I just put the samples in here and started working on them even more. And in this case, that snare or rim shot or whatever is pretty much unaffected by the stuff I did in the MPC. And that's definitely not the case with my kick drum which sounds like that right now because I applied a filter on it in the MPC. The sample I got from, from Addictive Drums sounded like this, which is cool, but not really for this context. So I just took it from this to this. And even though it sounds a bit too muddy and dark and whatever, it really works in this mix. So that's what it is. Context is everything. And on the program level for the drums, I do have a compressor going that just touches the kick drum a little bit like this. And without it. It doesn't do a lot, but it kind of makes the entire drum kit sound a little bit tighter and nicer, at least in the mix, in the, in the long run at the end. So yeah, we've taken a look at the sample and the drums. Now let's go to track three. Which isn't very complicated at all, just Fabric XL with the preset called Shadowlands. And I don't think I did anything to this one, I just let it be as it was. And it's good enough in the mix, so I'm just gonna keep it as it is. I find myself doing this kind of often these days when I work with samples, because whenever you find the root note of a sample, it's normally kind of easy to also find the, the chords that goes nicely with the sample itself. And sometimes samples like this from vinyl or like older recordings can be a little bit pitchy up and down, and it's sometimes kind of difficult to, to find one single note and play a single melody on it without first of all just nailing the chords and the, the notes. So just adding a pad sound like this on top of a sample kind of makes it easier to put a bass line inside of it without making things sound pitchy or off or whatever. So that's what I did with this one. Nothing too complicated, it's, it's just what it is. No effects or anything on that one, it's just what it is. And track four. That's the synth that I just used as a little synth line in the video you just saw. And this is also nothing special. This is just the Odyssey synth inside of the MPC. And what I did here was I added a little bit of release on the sound itself. And I also tweaked the settings in the echo because it was a little bit too much on the preset itself. And I just had to nail 
turn that down a little bit. So that made sense to me and I'm not even sure I'm gonna use that as I'm like finishing this entire track, but whatever, it's there right now. And before I landed on this one, I also had another plugin running, which is the Mini D, also the new one from Akai. <laughs> But whatever, I didn't use that for the track itself. But one thing I did here was, of course, recording a bass line into this one, and that's not on one of the MIDI tracks. That's, of course, on the audio track over here. Okay, playing it in solo like that doesn't really translate, but it kind of works in the mix, and I don't know, let's just see what I did. So first of all, I added an amp simulator from the MPC itself. This one called Synth Bass 2, that's the preset. And I had to turn down the drive because it distorted in a way that I didn't really f thought fit into this track. And after that one, again, a compressor that just touches it a little bit. Let's look at the gain reduction over there. Okay, that's more than I expected, but whatever. That one's just there to make sure that the overall volume of the bass line is kind of consistent and doesn't, you know, become too low or too high anywhere in the track. And yeah, that's a compressor. And after that, I also applied a filter to, in this case, keep some of the low frequencies, which also translates to getting rid of some of the high frequencies. And let's just try it without this one on. Yeah, too much of the string sound and the actual slide on the string, so I think I kind of made it work nonetheless. So, so you know, for something like this, I don't feel like you have to overwork anything. Simplicity is key, and in this case, a chopped up sample, a drum kit, some chords, a bass line, and somewhat of a melody that I'm not even sure I'm gonna keep in the long run, kind of makes a beat. And of course, this is just sequence one, and I have another one that's over here. And all I did for sequence two was basically to take out a lot of the different drums to not make it as busy, like that. Yeah, and I also used the tambourine as the snare sound for every single hit instead of every other as I did in the first pattern. So that's what I did with that one. And also for the sample, of course, that's a complete different type of pattern, but with the same sample and with all the same effects and processing and stuff like that. So kind of the same, but a little bit different, you know? And I'm sure I've said this tons of times before, but not focusing too much on the numbers and the values and the like specific details of anything, just going with the flow and making a beat, even though the baseline obviously sounds kind of crazy. To me, that's just more fun and it makes more sense in the creative process. And then if I want to release this one as a final track, sure, I have to like revisit all the different tracks and tweak my settings and make things a little bit nicer. But this is good enough for what it is, good enough for a jam session, you know? Well, at least that's what I think about it, right? And that's what matters the most. And hopefully I'm able to inspire some of you to, to make more music or release more music or become more creative or learn more or whatever. And at this point, I'm just rambling on about nothing. So let's end this video right here and uh, follow, subscribe, like, comment, uh, check out links below for DistroKid and HyperFollow and all that good stuff, as well as my free sample pack. And I don't even know what to say anymore. Thank you for watching and Hargat, uh, Hargat. Your beats. Your beats. Your beats. Your beats.